Hi, I'm Chaz Smith, and I still hate surfing. <laughs> hate surfing, don't hate you. So let's get into the news that matters this week. Now, everybody, no doubt, has been following along with the Chopu kerfuffle. Chopu, as you know, or Paris, was granted the 2024 games. Now, surf fans, surfers, thrill about Chopu. Nothing is better, that backdrop. Green crags pointing into the sky. That wave, so terrifyingly scary. Now, Brazil has wonderful Chopu surfers. We have Gabe Romadina who puts clinics on out there. We have Joao Chianca, maybe one of the most exciting up-and-comers in the world. We have Idolo, gold medalist from last Olympics, charges the place. Except, you know who current number one in the world is? Two-time world champion, thereby stamping his ticket? One, Felipe Toledo. Felipe Toledo, wonderful surfer inarguably the best small wave surfer on the planet, hates Chopu as much as I hate surfing. All the talent in the world, all the ability in the world, all the skill in the world, all the training in the world, the little lion refuses to paddle. I've always wondered if his act of cowardice was in fact brave to, world wants you to go? I ain't gonna go. I'm gonna sit here and get 0.00 heat scores. First time in history out at Chopu. I'm not going to explain why I don't go. I'm not going to claim fear. I'm not going to claim anything. It's none of your business, man. Philippe does not paddle Chopu. That's what we all know. The narrative that has been set is one of abject fear. He does look terrified out there. Now, I would be terrified out there. I have been. I've sat in the channel at Chopu and was terrified even bobbing in that boat. You would be terrified out there, unless you're Nathan Hedge. But Philippe Toledo is not you or I. He is a professional surfing at the height of his powers, at the very top of his game. He has everything at his disposal, including cat-like reflexes. Except he refuses to paddle. He is scared. He is scared of the reef. On the one hand, we have Brazil, surf mad nation, now, a taste of winning. Olympic gold in the first. We have Chopu next. We have Los Angeles after the Paris Olympics, which will likely be at Lower Trestles, I would imagine. Or, you know, maybe Huntington. Philippe could easily win there, too. After that, we have the Brisbane Games, which will likely be, I would imagine, somewhere on the Gold Coast. Philippe could win there, too. This could be a one, two, three, four. Brazil could win the first four Olympic gold medals, except this stinking Chopu and Philippe Toledo. You got Gabriel Medina sitting home on the couch, right? He's not going to go. Philippe is qualified. What if, though? Philippe has roped the entire world as dopes. What if Philippe and his team saw this coming, saw the Paris Games going to be held at Chopu long ago? What if he said, let's let him think I'm scared. Let's let him think I don't want to paddle there. Let's take the air out of this room. Then he shows up to Chopu, having secretly trained at some unknown slab near San Clemente. And he goes out and he slays in front of everyone. This, mark my words, would be not only one of the greatest stories in surfing history, this would be one of the greatest stories in Olympic history. It would match the miracle on ice where the undergunned U.S. men's hockey team went out and beat the mighty Soviets. It would be more idyllic than Cool Runnings wherein the Jamaicans learned how to bobsled and made it all the way to Olympics. The cowardly lion conquering Chopu would be a smash hit. And I wonder, I wonder, if Felipe has been playing this game all along. Hmm. Makes you think, doesn't it? 
Until next week. 